Well, Nepal's newly elected Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli is in India and will hold formal talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. On the second day of his India visit, he'll be accorded a ceremonial reception and inspect the Guard of Honor at the Presidential House. Prime Minister Oli will also be meeting Indian President Ramnath Kovind and Vice President Venkaya Naidu before paying homage to Mahatma Gandhi at Rajkhat. Prime Minister Modi will be hosting a lunch in the honor of the ne uh, Nepali Prime Minister and his delegation, which will be followed by delegation-level talks between the two nations. Now, speaking to reporters, Nepal PM said that India is a good neighbor and he has great expectations from the meeting. The two leaders would also jointly lay the foundation of the Arun 3 hydroelectric project. During the course of his three-day visit, the two nations are also expected to iron out differences on treaties already signed, while also laying groundwork for dealing with outstanding issues uh, requiring attention. The visit comes amid speculations that Nepal is drifting increasingly towards China after the alliance of leftist alliance of leftist parties gained two-thirds majority in parliament. PM Oli will return to uh, Nepal on Sunday and is then expected to head to China next week to attend a summit there. Now, this attempted patch-up is happening after months of hectic diplomacy. Our next report looks at what it took to get the two sides back on track. On the face of it, India and Nepal have everything in common. There's a shared culture and religion. An estimated 3 million Nepali nationals live and work in India. There's free movement across borders. Yet, ties between the two capitals have rarely been smooth. It was so during the days when Nepal was a monarchy, it's so today in Republican Nepal. Let's look at the recent missteps by India and Nepal. In 2015, Delhi opposed the new Nepali constitution, saying it did not address the concerns of the Madhesis living in the plains of Nepal bordering India. But K.P. Oli stoutly defended the constitution, rejecting India's concerns. India backed a blockade by the Madheshis, cutting off essential supplies to Kathmandu. Oli stoked ultra-nationalism and sought China's support. India forged a coalition of Maoists, Nepali Congress and Madheshis to fight Oli. Oli won over the Maoists and with China's support won the polls last year. But politics is the art of compromise. In the weeks leading up to his victory in December 2017 and thereafter, Oli and Narendra Modi were reported to have struck up a working relationship. Interlocutors conveyed messages between the two leaders. They spoke over the phone apparently three times. It was all plain speaking. Oli complained about how India had treated him, how Delhi tried to undermine him in 2015 and toppled his government in 2016. Intermediaries told him to let bygones be bygones. India stayed neutral during the elections and is committed to working with Prime Minister Oli, but he must stop his anti-India rants. What now then? Course correction is underway with India keen to address Nepal's stalled development issues. Pending projects such as work on the 900 megawatt Arun Hydroelectric will be remotely inaugurated by Modi and Oli on Saturday. Also, the integrated check post in Birganj. India had offered $1 billion in 2015 to help Nepal rebuild after the earthquake. With a strong government in power in Nepal, much can be accomplished. Bureau Report, Beyond.